Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Um, my ears are ringing because Simon's been on the phone today. <laughs> Who knows why? No, I know why, because uh, I slightly misled him about the difficulty of a puzzle he had to do earlier. So uh, that video is certainly worth checking. Um, as Simon said, though, he's probably misled people who thought it might be an easy solve. But uh, that's why we put up the um, little video of me saying saying what I'd done to him. Um, anyway, let's get on with something a little bit more manageable. Now, I don't think I've been misled here. I guess we'll find out. You'll probably know by the length of the video already. I don't. But I was, I've been told that this puzzle isn't too bad at all. Now, that's despite the fact that it's only got two numbers in the grid. But, 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 but. Simon Ferre's four times the magic has four magic squares marked in the grid, apparently. So I think we know, if, we, if you've looked at any of the magic square content recently, do bear with us. Some people say they don't like the magic square puzzles. Some people say they do like them. Um, I do quite like them. I think they're always quite interesting. But uh, possibly you don't. Anyway, going to still give it a go because I like the idea. I love the, the fact that you can create a Sudoku with four magic squares in this symmetrical arrangement. I think that's quite fascinating. I didn't realize that was possible. So um, hats off to Simon Ferre, who's done it. It might be Simon, given that there's an acute on the last E of his name, which I probably won't be able to render in the puzzle title. Sorry, Simon. Um, anyway, let's have a go at this puzzle. Do try it on the link below the video. Do know before you try it that a magic square, a three by three magic square has five in the middle, even numbers on the outsides, on the corners, they'll all be, oops, uh, let's do it on a different colored cell. They'll all be even. Um, the others will all be odd. Five in the middle. All the rows and columns have to add up to 15 in a three by three magic square of one to nine. So that's useful to know. Do try it on the link below the video. As I said, I'm going to try it now. Let's get cracking. So Let's put in those fives that are always in the center straight away. Bam, four digits given. Um, now, as I said, ah, oh, actually, look, that gives us a five in the middle because all those fours are looking into the middle box and ruling out all those fives are looking into the middle box and ruling out those. Uh, what I meant was all those four fives. Now, in this row up here, We've got two odd numbers, and they can't be the one nine that go together to make 15. So they must be three seven. Then we can have one nine here. Um, hmm, that doesn't tell us about these ones particularly. Um, the one can't be there, but that's not all that helpful. Let's try the six then. Okay, yes, the six can't be in any of those three corners, although it must be in a corner. So the six is there. Now to make the diagonal add up to 15, we're going to put a four there. These other two are two and eight. Now, I know that a two is always surrounded by seven and nine in a magic square. A four though, oh, I suppose it has to add up with either the eight or the two. So three or nine either side of a four. So the other two are one and seven. Um, this isn't quite as straightforward as I was hoping. Right, the six though is seeing those two cells. So six up here will be in one of those two. Four will be opposite it across the diagonal. Um, that four is looking at these two. So four must be over there and six opposite it again. Um, ooh, this isn't quite, ah, oh, no. Six there and six there and six in one of those means we can put a six in one of those two. Ah, oh, right, yes, that's of some use. Now, six in this box, box two, that six is ruling out those three, so it must be over here somewhere. The others are odd. So six is in one of those and one of those. It's not 
Okay, maybe I'm being dense here, but I don't think this is a giveaway at all. It's quite an interesting puzzle. Ah, oh, six in this magic square. Okay, yes, no, that's much more useful. Right, six in exactly the same way. Six can't be in those two corners, so it's confined to those two corners with four opposite it. But the really important thing about that is actually that gives us a four. Four in row seven there, four in row nine there, the four in row eight must be in box eight. But the six is there, rule out that, and importantly that, from being a six. So they put the six in the green magic square there. So four opposite it, again surrounded by three and nine. One and seven surround the six, two and eight in the other parts of the magic square there. Oh, I thought those, that four, well, it's effectively already operating on that. Ah, but this six, yes, that's ruling out two more penciled sixes. So six goes in up here in the magic square. Again, it's opposite the four. That takes out that possibility of six. We can put six in there. I guess, yeah, that six is seeing that one. We're gonna be able to put in all the sixes. So it is, it is pretty straightforward to get going once you've seen how the grid is operating together. Um, but it took a moment, that's not simple. So four opposite the six again. Um, it looks a bit like, oh, I've written the wrong numbers up here for some. No, I haven't. No, I put that one nine in originally because of the one. Ah, yes, and four can't be next to a one because it couldn't make 15. Right, so we can actually finish off this magic square. Four, nine, two, two plus six is eight plus seven. So the nine's opposite one, that's a three, that's an eight, and they all add up to 15. Eight, one, six, 15, three, five, seven's 15, four, nine, two, eight, three, four, one, five, nine, six, seven, two, and the diagonals, eight, five, two, and six, five, four. So all sorted. So now that two is giving us that one, that eight is sorting out the evens over here, that two is sorting out the evens down here, and now we can finish off all the magic squares by adding up the rows and columns to 15. Brilliant. Um, and we really are away with a good fast start. The sort of start Simon imagined he would get with that killer earlier. <laughs> oh, I'm nasty. Right, um, so we've got a one and nine to go in the middle column. Three and seven to go in the middle row, but actually they can't be resolved. That's quite amusing. Six is there. Four is over here. Um, right, I said that I thought we could finish off all the sixes, and I think we can. Six there. Does it? Is that it? No, six there. Okay, that does it. Um, three, five, seven, six. So eight, one across the top because they're there. So in row four, they must be here. Oh, hit the wrong mode one and eight, right? Two, four, and nine. Yep, they can just go straight in. Two and four there, and two there. One, five down here. Seven must be there. Eight and three are disambiguated by the eight over here. And I think we're really on the home straight already. So this really was a very manageable one. Um, I say I'm using the past tense and that's a bit daring because I'm not done yet. But I really can't see how this is going to put up much resistance. It just shows how powerful these magic squares are that they can kind of give it away to you. So if you found this easy, go back and try the Simon puzzle if you didn't try it already. That will blow your mind. Now three and seven in the middle. Ah, oh, yeah, I was beginning to wonder and there is something absolutely fascinating here. Um, yeah, hats off to Simon for this, uh, the Simon the composer, Simon Ferre, because all these magic squares, the yellow, green, blue, and red, they're all exactly the same. They're the same orientation. They're exact clones with eight in the top left corner, one, six. And if you notice, I mean, I think this is unbelievable, but it's obviously just a natural thing the middle box as well. 
is a magic square. I'm going to color it in purple just to show you that this grid it's like a windmill or a flower. It's holding five separate magic squares, all in exactly the same orientation, all exactly the same magic square. And they all fit together and make a real Sudoku. I mean, that's quite an interesting discovery to me. What I'm admiring here is the fact that Simon didn't call this five times the magic and color the central box as well, which I think a lot of people would have been tempted to do. but. The puzzle's actually got a tiny bit of bite the way he did set it up with just four magic squares. I don't think it would be solvable with any fewer, although you could guess at those, but I think it would presumably be ambiguous if you didn't colour four of them at least. But uh, that's intriguing. I mean, what a fascinating setup. So if you wanted a bit of light relief today, I hope you found it with this puzzle. Um, I'm going to go now and worry about what revenge Simon will wreak on me at some point because he he did sound actually quite irritated um, which you know I hope to take it in fun but I'm sure he will really so thank you very much for watching um, both of our both of our items today and uh, I certainly hope to see you again oh by the way thank you very much if you've um, sent a message about the Sudoku hunt uh, there have been some really really complimentary stuff some touching messages and they mean a lot to us i have to say we're we're very pleased with that thank you um but generally we'll see you again soon on cracking the cryptic bye for now